Okay, in this video we're going to cover um, an assortment of different uh, charging systems, uh, mostly Apple ones. We've got a couple Anchor uh, ones in here um, using USB-C. Uh, this is an iPad Pro 10.5. This is an iPhone 8, which I understand both of these uh, newer uh, iOS devices support high-speed charging or USB PD. Um, this is an iPhone 7 Plus, which I have another video that goes over this in greater details with a, a Mac and some older uh, iPhones and iPads. So I'll link that. You can uh, definitely look at that. Apologize, the production quality is not going to be as good on this one because I'm in a little bit of a hurry. But um, I also have my kilowatt meter here, which will tell us the, the actual draw of all these devices. So first to repeat, I'll, I'll just show um, the iPhone 7 Plus uh, real quick. Um, this is my only non-Apple cable, but it's an Amazon Basics uh, certified one, and it actually works works fine. So uh, I think we're more interested in the USB-C uh, tests. So um, you'll notice when I plug this in uh, using the, the standard iPhone charger, we get just over five watts, uh, which is to be expected. This is a five volt and one amp. Um, and you can see uh, in my other video as well, you know, there's there's a little bit of, of wiggle room in there and they, they tend to measure a little bit high, but 6.6, uh, 6.7 6 watts uh, on that charger. If we move over to an iPad charger, um, which is a you know 10 to 12 watt type charger, uh, again, going to an iPhone, we'll be able to get um, the full, uh, full wattage out of here, about 13 uh, watts. Again, iPhone 7 Plus. No special charging, so we're able to get the max out of that. Um, we use a anchor charger here, um, which is also known to be uh, a high-speed charger, and again, uh, 13 watts. Um, I believe this is actually specified for more. Um, we'll we'll test that on the iPhone 8 and iPad later. Um, I'll take a 29 watt USB-C um, and use a USB-C. Apple OEM to Lightning ca uh, cable, and we'll plug that into the iPhone 7. And, and what you're going to find is, um, in all cases, this iPhone 7 is really not capable of taking more than 12 or, or 13 watts. Um, and the same is if I even go to like the 61 watt um, Mac charger. And again, I don't want to beat this, uh, you know, dead horse because I covered this one in my my other video. So what I'd like to do now is, is switch to uh, the I iPad Pro uh, 10.5 and, uh, and show a couple things. I also have a kind of non-quality uh, cable, which in my earlier tests uh, was limit, you know, became a cable limited situation. So um, we'll go ahead and start again with the uh, you know, five watt charger going to the uh, iPad Pro. And you'll see, you know, obviously, no surprise there. Again, just over the five watts as stated. Um, go to the, the standard iPad charger. I apologize because I'm filming this myself without a tripod today. And we'll see the same, you know, the same thing. And then this is what we would expect because this is maxing out the charger, not necessarily the device. Um, once we move to the USB-C devices uh, with the iPad Pro, things get a little bit more interesting, which I did update my notes in the last video, but now we're, this is a 29 watt charger, so we're effectively able to get the full 31 watts out of that. Um, I also have a non-Apple brand anchor charger, also USB-C, basically kind of a probably more cost-effective approach at the same thing. And I believe we should see effectively the same result. Or actually, interestingly, oh, there we go. Sometimes it takes a while for them to, you know, find this the circuit. But uh, interestingly, you know, we were able to get over the 29 watts to about 31 watts, and it looks like this is only going to be able to pull about 25 to 26 watts, but still substantial. I mean, that would you know double your your charging time. So we move up to the 61 watt charger. We'll see, um, again, and I covered this in my other video's notes, but I had less luck with uh, these chargers. The, the 29 watt was, was definitely 
the uh, the charger of choice. So you can see here that the 61 watt Apple charger can only do 21.8, um, just kind of kind of strange. Um, but you know, some of these have 14.5 volt circuits. Some of them have you know nine volts, and there's all sorts of uh, other things, which is better covered in my other video. But here's the 87 watt again going to an iPad Pro. And you can see again around 21 watts. So interestingly, the largest charger uh, draws the least, which is the 87 watt, then the 67, then the off-brand 29 watt, then the um, you know Apple OEM uh, 29 watt. We'll do the, the anchor charger here real quick and uh, show that going in because this one has some extra power, they, they say. Um, so you can actually see it does do better than the standard iPad charger at about 15 watts. That's probably three amps, five volts it's pulling on that one. Um, one other thing I wanted to show real quick, I'll, I'll pick the, the best charger um, again and go, oops, just lost my dock there. Uh, we'll pull the, um, this is the one that was, was able to and this is something I've seen before too, and it's just something about the iPad, to, because this one earlier we saw over 30 watts, but I've seen this and it just sort of seems inconsistent charge to charge, like the iPad decides it wants full 30 watts or 25, so that pretty much standardizes it now with the, the anchor. But one thing I, I did try earlier was a kind of uh, cheaper cable here, and I'll show this to you when I assemble it. Um, you know, that's got a bunch of adapters on it. So we have sort of a USB micro with a lightning cap on it and then a USB A to USB C adapter. And, um, if I plug that in over here and I plug this in over, over here, unfortunately. Sorry about, about that, but you can see we can only get eight watts off of this cable. Um, I've used this cable before. This is actually my brother-in-law's, but I, I bought this same one on Amazon some years ago and, and found it just deteriorated over time. And I suspect it's it's around here. I'm, I'm probably more confident in this little adapter, but it just goes to show that, you know, bad or uncertified cables, you, you sometimes get what you pay for. You can get, you can get luck, but this cable for all intents and purposes is not going to maximize. It only got eight watts when we've seen this charger go up to 30 watts with an OEM cable. So that covers that part of it. What we'll do now is, is move over to the iPhone 8 because I think that that's the, the interesting one. And we'll run through uh, the combination of different uh, devices here and, and see, um, again here, I expect no surprises uh, here. We're going to be limited to the, the six, just over five watts available uh, on this one. Um, we'll swap, swap it out for the, uh, app, uh, the iPad charger. And again, I don't, I, I would expect, I've actually never done this one. So this is going to look, uh, I mean, I've never done these USB-C ones, but you're going to see we're going to be able to get the max, which is again, 12 watts and a little bit, a little bit over that. Um, so no surprise there. Now let's see if the uh, anchor charger, which I believe has a 15 watt um, 5 volt in it, is able to pull more than the iPad charger, because I've not seen an iPhone yet, yet, and it's well, we saw, yep. So that's pretty interesting. Um, so the I, iPhone 8 can certainly take more power even on 5 volt than uh, iPhone 7, and again, this is actually a perfect example of 5 volts at 3 amps. Um, to, be, to be expected. So what we'll do now is move to the USB-C cables, which for all intents and purposes, um, this is the million dollar question, so to speak. Again, 29 watt charger into an iPhone 8. And I do know that this has, you know, uh, I believe, a 3 amp 5 volt in it as well. So uh, that's what we're seeing here. Again, better than the iPhone 7, but we're not seeing, um, you know, like the 14.5 volt 2 amp circuit or the 27 watt. I think there's a 9, 9 volt um, in here as well. Try the Anchor off-brand 29 watt.
and uh, pretty much the same you know same effect to be to be expected I mean effectively these two um, outside of the, the size and the brand are, are similar specifications move up to the 61 watt I don't at this point expect any new surprises um, but you never know So yeah, I mean that's a, that's effectively 15 watts, um, just about six 16. Um, get a little bit extra on some of these, and we'll try the 87, which I expect to be exactly the same as the 61. But... Takes a little while. So that that pretty much concludes it. So the iPhone 8 definitely has um, a higher charging capability, but um, one thing that um, we do know is it's not pulling like the iPad Pro, which is able to get a full 30 watts um, or 29 watts. I'm sorry, we, we'll start the, I'm going to stitch this together, but um, the one other thing is I've got this off-brand. I used to use this when I had Android's um, U-Tech charger. It's 5 volt, 1 amp out. Um, it's got a little bit more on the input, so this can only really deliver 5 watts, but I thought it'd be interesting to show the wireless charging so again i'll go here and you know without it plugged in it's just got you know some some flea power here um 0.2 watts but as we know the iphone 8 has wireless charging you can see you know at this point it's limited um to not even not even able to get the full full five watts um so you know there's obviously additional power loss transfer in, in this wireless thing so this is definitely not there there we go i've kind of creeped up there so we're able to get pretty much the maximum out of that device which is nice but uh unfortunately i don't have a higher wireless charging uh unit but this is effectively the same as using a standard usb one amp circuit in fact it's showing a little bit more but i suspect this is drawing more power but we're losing more because of efficiency of wireless but uh, interesting test so hope that uh shows how the iPhone 8 and, and to some degree the iPad Pro, um, you know, work with all these different chargers. Thanks. Hope you found the video informative.